Pick a side nation. How's everyone doing today? My name is James Finley. I'm your host of the Pick a Side podcast, and welcome back into the lab. I want to thank all of my previous guests that has appeared on the podcast. Thank you so very kindly for taking the time to be a part of these uh, episodes that uh, I've been able to put out. And so I just want to make sure that I give uh, the gratitude and the thanks uh, for just being so very kind to help me out. So on today's show, uh, it talks about uh, divorce and how it has affected my kids. And on today's show, I'm going to have my daughter Shantia and my son Jake to come on the show and talk about how the divorce between their mother and myself affected them. Uh, Very uncomfortable for me to do. There are some things that I will be hearing for the first time, Uh, but I didn't want to be a hypocrite. I didn't want to be having someone else to do this show when I've, when this sits in my own backyard and something that I know needs to be discussed and talked about. So I hope that you all sit back and enjoy uh, this particular episode. And if there's anyone out there that are going through anything similar, I hope that this episode might be able to help you all out to the best of its ability. So thank you so very much uh, for tuning in. Sit back and enjoy this episode of Divorce and how it has affected my kids. I don't own the rights to this music, so thank you so very much. Pick Aside Nation, welcome into the lab. Welcome to the Pick Aside Podcast on another episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. I'm your host, James Finley, and on today's show, we have two very special guests that uh, quite a few of you that know me, you guys kind of know these two individuals that's on the screen. So one of the individuals, it's just my daughter, it's my oldest daughter, Shantia, and I have my only son, Jake, on here as well. And so today's show, we're going to be talking about some topics that, uh, you know, You might as well just put me in front of a firing squad and just say, shoot the gun. But uh, I felt that this was going to be something that would be beneficial uh, for so many people uh, that have gone through uh, a difficult time that my kids went through and something that uh, I, you know, was kind of the one that put them in this position. So, uh, you know, we always say on the show that we like to talk about uncomfortable conversations in order to be comfortable. And so such is the case. I didn't want to do I didn't want to have this interview with anyone else uh, other than myself, because I felt like interviewing somebody else about this topic would be hypocritical on my part. So uh, there's a lot of transparency uh that goes along with the interview that we're going to be doing today and uh, there are a lot of some things here that uh you know i haven't heard from my kids before and so this is kind of exclusive because i'll be hearing it for the first time and um so it's never comfortable but uh i love my kids dearly i have great relationships with both of them and uh so this gives them an opportunity to kind of say some things uh to me uh, that, uh, I haven't heard. So anyway, so today's, uh, today's interview, it's all about divorce and how it has affected my kids. Shantia, welcome to the show. How are you doing today, sweetheart? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm glad that you are here. And, uh, my son, Jake, how you doing today? Doing well, man. See, Everybody, so let me just say this right now for, you know, let me, let's get this on out the way. I had to give my son a little disclaimer before we came on here because my son, you know, hey, hey, he he has a lot of me in him to a certain extent, uh, very sarcastic and all of that. And so, 
I'm just hoping that it won't be too much on full display as we try to render through this interview process. So uh, you guys just take whatever he says and just try to bear with him. That's my, uh, but that's my son. And I, I oh, love we'll him. He'll be fine, man. Yeah, I, I, be fine. I, I know, I know. So kids, so uh, we're talking about divorce, as you guys know. <clears throat> Back in uh, 1990 uh, is when, no, no, 1998, 97, 98, 99 is when uh, uh, your mother and myself uh, had separated and we got divorced. And so I know that, Jake, what grade were you in at the time? Wait, hold on, when? I want to say 99. Was so when did you guys separate? Uh, it was uh, early 99. So early 99. Divorce was final in 2000, correct? Right, 2000. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, so I was in the fourth grade. Fourth grade. Yeah. Tia, what grade was you in? Um, I, I, yeah, I was like entering my senior year, I think. So you was entering your senior year. Okay, so let's start off the bat. So how we'll do this, since Shantia is the oldest, so Shantia will go first, and then Jake, you'll be able to uh, follow up uh, with her. So so first question, how did the divorce impact you, your emotional well-being at the time, Shantia? Um, I would say uh, I felt a... Um, various emotions, actually. I was confused. I was hurt. And I was angry, to say the least. Um, those are the three that come to mind right now, anyway. But I feel like um, there was various emotions that I felt for different reasons. I was... Did you want me to elaborate on that, or just generally speaking? Yeah, sure. I, I, hey, you have to knock yourself out. So um, I was confused because I didn't understand per se why. Um, I think growing up a lot, I didn't really see that there was any problems. So for me, I was like, what happened? Yeah. Um, and then I was angry because I felt like my family wasn't together anymore. Right. Um, and then I was hurt because obviously, you know, who wants their family broken up? Yeah. And I knew that there was going to be a shift or a change of some sort. Um, so dealing with change is hard, but when you deal with a change like that, it's you just don't know what to do. Yeah. At that and, and let me let me stop you for a quick second. Let me let me let me kind of go back prior to that. Shantia just said something that was uh, that I that I have to touch when she said that she didn't really see those type of signs, you know, in in the home and uh, and you know her mother and myself, you know, we always tried to do a pretty decent job of keeping that away, and uh, to kind of give you a little backstory on all of that, uh, Shantia and Jay really, when I was in the home and what have you. They really had a great childhood, you know, coming up, you know, uh, we did did a lot of things together and what have you. And uh, almost kind of huxtable somewhat, you know, a lot of people had looked up to our little family, you know, and all of that. And so uh, henceforth, you know, the the shock and all of it is probably something that uh, was was quite shocking. Uh, Jake, you want to elaborate on it a little bit? Yeah, um, full transparency, I didn't know what the heck was going on <laughs> at the time. Uh, I remember when the divorce was final or some. I remember when you left because uh, we were living in Park Knoll 51K at the time. Yeah. And really uh, I remember you came into my room. You gave me a long hug and you kissed me on the forehead. I was it was early in the morning, and you was like, "I'll see you later," but I didn't understand what was going on at the time. So 
uh, I didn't understand. And I was, so I guess I was really confused at it. And I'm a, I remember vividly being in the store. You remember this, Tia? We was in the store. We think we was at probably Kroger with mom. And I had got upset with mom. And I was like, dang, I should have went with that. And you snatched me up so dang fast, Tia. <laughs> so Tia snatched me up when I made that comment and like pulled me to the side because mom had that look in her eye like she was about to like just go off on me in the store. But Tia snatched me up and like literally like cursed me out in the most polite way and was like, you have no idea what's going on right now. I will explain it when you're older, but stop being a brat, yeah. basically. <laughs> but like she literally, do you remember that, Tia? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's what I kind of realized, like, OK, like there's something deeper to this. But I mean, I'm 10 years old. I don't know. So at the yeah. time, like I was just, yeah, I, OK, like that's not going to be here, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. And and during and during that whole beginning of it, um, the hardest the hardest thing was when I had to get on that plane and, uh, and leave. And, you know, it just really, really screwed me up, you know? And, uh, but so for that, uh, so what was some of the psychological effects uh, that this had on, that this divorce has had on you guys? Sent you? Um, I think that a lot of times you don't necessarily know what the psychological effects are until you get older and you start dealing in relationships, I guess, in general. Um, so I think for me, for a long time, when I, you know, had a boyfriend, it was a distance. Like, I wouldn't let them get close to me or I would just kind of distrust very easily or I would say um fish for lies to a certain degree yeah. um and say okay the tone changed I, I just became very observant like the tone changed when you said this so you're telling the story right. I think it, for me it was just kind of like I'm not sure how to navigate necessarily being in a relationship so for me that was a, a a huge issue initially it was very big on distrust and you know trying to figure out how to be my loving emotional self but it was hard at first yeah jake um for me like growing up like i didn't really see it uh but as i like got older like 20s and 30s like um i guess you can say i became like a serial dater <laughs> uh <laughs> for the most part um yeah like became a serial dater and it's just like it was one of those things where um I always, I stayed single because I didn't want to uh, cheat on anyone per se. So it was just like, nah, like, why would I do that? Why would I be in a relationship when I can just have them all? If I'm single, technically, you yeah. know, like I don't have anyone to answer to. So I guess that is like the psychological if there was any that it had, like it turned me into like a, like just, nah, like I'm 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 chilling, like I'm cool, person. So, here's a little something, uh, kind of off the beaten path. Um, when did you guys find out what the real reason was why your mom and myself divorced? Shantia. When did I find out? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say my senior year. Um, I think going into it, 
maybe between that summer or something like that, maybe December, um, I found out when I went to go to California. I think Jake and I went together. We went to visit during like that winter break, right? For Christmas or something like that, Jake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's when I found out. Jake, you? I found out when I was like 15 or 16 years old. Um, it was a uh, full transparency. Um, something happened um, on a church retreat. Um, and my mama said, you just like your daddy. Mm -hmm. And it hurt her. And it, uh, I was like, what the hell? And I had to kind of ask Tia, like, because Tia always has this phrase, I'll tell you when you get older. That has been Tia's number one phrase, like, I'll tell you when you get older. And so when Tia told me, uh, that's when I stopped talking to you. Yeah. For a while. And, and so, so let's huh? so let's kind of dive in that for a little bit. So yeah. uh so listen, so I uh because of my infidelities, uh is the reason why uh uh their mother decided to to divorce me. Uh and to be honest. And on um, full transparency, uh, probably should have happened probably a lot sooner. And uh, something that I'm not going to sit up here and just try to make excuses for because it was wrong. And uh, and this is kind of why I wanted I wanted to do this this show uh, because uh, there's been so many times where I've had the opportunity to talk with young men, especially in the barbershops, um, You know, Jake. Uh, I don't know if you remember when Big C had a shoe shine uh, place in the mall, not in the mall, uh, at the, the hotel. hotel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, I would have a platform to really uh, sit down and talk with uh, young brothers that, you know, they would be in there talking about, yeah, man, I'm, I'm about to go out with the old girl and they married. And so I would always say, hey, fellas. I say, hey man, don't don't do it. And I would let them know. I say, hey man, it costed me my family and my kids. And whatever you need to do, man, you know, uh try your best to work it out as much as you can, but don't go that route because I'm here to tell you that it it has a it has a very short life shelf to that. And uh I never will forget uh that I was uh I was out one day and I saw this young man who I had spoken with and uh, while I was getting my shoes shine, I didn't even know who he was. And he came up to me. It's like, Hey man, do you know big C? I was like, yeah. He was like, Hey, you was in there one day and you was talking about, you know, not cheating and this and that. And he was like, man, I, I can't even tell you, man, how much it helped me, you know, with that. And so, you know, I felt kind of good about that because I was like, I said, well, you know, that was the mission to try to to help somebody if it was nobody but one. But uh, during that time, Jake, uh, I, I really remember because you kind of cut off all communications with me for a full year. Yeah. And man, it for me, it, it just tore me up because, you know, uh, you wouldn't talk to me or anything like that. And uh, do you remember what I had to do? I think you flew down to Atlanta. <laughs> and yeah. That's when you guys were going. I think it was work. Was it word yeah, of faith? Yeah, word of faith. And you like just popped up. Yeah. And, everything. and so like for me, um, that was a good moment and everything. Uh, but also I think that was also when I realized I was like messing up in school too. <laughs> It's now, a, hold, hold, hold that, hold that thought. Oh, okay. hold, All right. All right. Oh, yeah. hold on. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Yes. So I just want to kind of go back there because that night when I flew in, I was like going straight to the church mm -hmm. because I spoke with your mom and she said that, you know, you guys had choir rehearsal or something that was going on at night. And I remember it was bone chilling cold. It was so cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got there, uh, I was like, hey, where's where he at? You know, and then when I saw you, you know, hey, we embraced and the, re and the rest was history. 
um, Shantia, with you being a senior in high school, uh, how did how did the divorce affect you in your academics? Were you still able to focus? Uh, you know, how how what did it do? What did it do for you? I had senior artists on steroids. I was sleeping in, um, missing school. I wasn't doing my homework. Mm. I, I think I had shortened day at some point in time on the work study, but wasn't doing no work. I it I just had tapped out. I mean, I I think that I feel like I barely graduated, honestly. Um I didn't, of course, fail any classes, but I was not, I was getting C's and D's, honestly. Yeah. Because I like, whatever. And, and see, this is, is another aspect of, of you know, when kids have to go through a divorce, it, it just, it messes everything up. It just messes every aspect of that up. And uh, <laughs> Jake, Jake, what... <laughs> Jake, what did it do for you, man? How, how'd your academic... Hey, man. <laughs> From the start of my school career up until the divorce, I was pretty much a scholar student. Uh -huh. Once that divorce happened, hey, man, I failed every class known to man from the fourth grade up until graduation. Um, I was just completely... Fourth grade was probably like if I had to think of like all of my report cards combined, Fourth grade was probably one of the worst report cards ever. Yeah. I think I had four F's on that report card, a C and a D. It didn't help that one of my best friends was in that class with me. But um, I don't know how I made it to the next grade, to be completely honest with you, because I probably yeah. should have been kept back. Now, but there was there was an incident that happened at Brumby, right, where you just literally scared Body and uh, you know, I don't know if I was still. I, th I think I was. I think I was in L.A. when the incident happened. You know what I'm talking about? I do not. I don't remember that. With the glass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're not gonna talk about that here. That's just, just no. I just made a few threats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, you know, but it's I mean, <laughs> like. Yeah, like so, I say like it had like the like when I think about like the long term effects, because like it had on me because even when I got into high school, uh, like the damage was already done. Like I'm a smart kid, but like I just after the divorce, I just did not care about school anymore. Like, yeah. and there was no one really to like really, like I guess not not to use the word beat it into me, but like beat it into me. Mom was already had so much on her plate. And so it didn't really hit me until my junior year when I looked at my schedule for senior year and I was like, I ain't gonna graduate on time. I gotta go to LA. And like before I called you, like I literally, I was in the library. I spent my whole lunch period in the library and I was looking up schools and I was like Crenshaw High School and I'm comparing my transcript to how I could graduate out there. And I'm like, well, I'm looking at it, the class, I'm like, I think I can get out of here on time if I just go to Crenshaw. And that's when I called you on my lunch. I'm like, hey, I got to move out there because if not, I'm not going to graduate. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, nothing but the Lord that uh, we were able to get you, get you through that, you know, because that was, that was a little rough period, period of time. But, you know, and once again, you know, uh, there and I'll, I'll say it kind of towards the end of the of the show. Uh, let's go on to the next question. So, reflecting on the divorce, uh, and this probably going to be more so for you, Jake, than Shantia. Reflecting on the divorce, do you think it would have affected you differently if you had been older? Um, yeah, probably so. Um, because they say you know a son and his father go through phases mm -hmm. and everything. And um, I think the divorce made us go through that phase a, a little bit quicker than normal and mm -hmm. a little bit more drawn out than how it should have been. Um, like, because at first, like, I didn't get it, hated you, you know, and then now 
like earlier in my 20s, you start to like, okay, understand it a little bit. And then you kind of like not feel bad or like sympathize with you. But then like now as an adult, it's just like, okay, like, you know, people make mistakes, man. Like the Bible tells us to forgive, you know? And um, and so that's pretty much what I had to do. Like I, if this would have happened when I was probably like, like out of high school, then we'll probably have a, I'll probably have a different outlook on it, of course. But yeah. Yeah. What about you, Shantia? Um, I, I feel like if I would have been maybe in my 20s, it would have been a little bit different because I would have been able to see relationships from a different perspective. When you're a child, you see, <clears throat> I said, I didn't really see anything wrong with it versus when I got a little bit older, you know, it's like, okay, this is going on. You can kind of read things a little bit better. So I might've been able to handle it a little bit better um, just based off of observation and in a more mature mindset. But I mean, you know. Yeah. So um, for both of you guys, uh, did you guys see any, can you guys just can describe, I should say the behavioral changes that you noticed in yourself following the divorce? Like what's some of the things that come to mind for you, Shantia, that you know for sure that you start maybe started acting out this type of way that you didn't uh, because of the divorce? Um, I'll go back to part of what I said before with the distrust. Um, but I would say I, I became like more of a second mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, just kind of feeling like I need to look out extra. I think during that time frame, that was another time where Jake and I kind of got closer um, and learned to help each other out and <laughs> keep each other's secrets. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cover for each other, you know, so. Um, I just think, I think that for me, it was just, I, I was all over the place. I was trying to be myself, but then mature at the same time. So, yeah. What about you, Jake? Um, for me, um, again, like I was just a kid, but, uh, I can't attest like growing up and looking back on it, like, yeah, Tia was like a second mom because at that time, like. I don't want to say this, but there was, I, I've told mom this anyway, like there was a moment for like a year and a half where mom kind of like checked out and Tia was more so like <laughs> the parent in the household when it came up to me. And so for me, it was more so of like just trying to find like guidance in certain aspects of life since I didn't have like the male figure like in the home anymore. So I spent a lot more time at my auntie Judy's house and my cousin Reggie became like my boy, like, like pretty much whatever Reggie did, I did. And so, cause I was just missing that male figure. And so in a sense, you know, Reggie, um, my cousin Anthony, um, they all became uh, pretty much like, key figures and you know jonathan too john john like they all became like key figures and like you know not knowingly but like i was just looking for that guidance because like i had it but i didn't have it because i would i had it in the springtime or i mean winter breaks and summer you know i remember coming back to see you for summer times every every year but during the school year i didn't have that so like i had to search for it in you know the older kids at Park Knoll, you know during the week, and then on the weekend it would be my cousin Reggie, Anthony, and John John. So, yeah, yeah. And Shantia, let me let me just say this to you now. You know, I I think I think that you were the best big sister that anybody could have, any brother could have asked for. You know. Uh, you know, because of everything that was going on, uh, 
I certainly appreciate the fact that, you know, you was there for Jake. Uh, not only was you there for Jake, but uh, because of his age, you know, you were you were smart enough, you were wise enough to withhold information from him that mm. really could have been a lot worse than what it was at that particular time. And I do thank you for that. Uh, and, you know, and at the more of appropriate time is when is when he found out. So, you know, uh, not only do I love you for that, but I really thank you tremendously that you were able, you were able to do that. So uh, going on. So what, what long, what long-term effects has divorce had on, on both of you guys? So how about that Tia? you? go first. Um, long-term effects. I think if anything, one of the biggest things has been the example that I didn't get to see like long-term, um, the ins and outs, of course, being shielded as a younger child and then trying to figure out what happened. I feel like there's been extremes where, you know, it's been a, a fantasy world at some times. And then the other stream is like, what is this? So I yeah. think, um, you know, trying to navigate and making sure, making sure that I have some balance um, on a regular basis had, I had to develop that over the years because yeah. I just didn't, I didn't have that. I didn't get to see that long term. Yeah. What about you, Jake? Um, long term effects, I would say it took me longer to really um, uh, realize, like, how to become a man, like a grown man. Um, and that's the reason why I was pretty much always back and forth. Like, when I tell people now, like, oh, yeah. I'm from LA, but I grew up in Atlanta. And then we get deeper into that. Like, oh, I actually went to elementary, middle, and high school in both states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's not real. Yeah. yeah. And so it's just like for me, like um, yeah. one of the reasons why I decided to move back at 22 was because um, for so long, like I didn't have like a constant male figure to teach me how to navigate. And at that time, like, I really needed you, you know? And so that's why I decided to like, okay, I don't know how to do this out here by myself in Atlanta. Like, you know, I effed over the apartment that I had cause I was way too young and everything. Didn't know anything about like money management or nothing like that, or didn't know how to just be a man in general. So the long-term effects, like it just, that aspect of it took longer. Like, to be honest, I didn't really get it until I became 30, you know, and that was just four years ago. <laughs> so that's when, when all the, the light bulbs. Yeah. Start on but about, I, about I life. feel like it would have been sooner if the yeah. family would stay together. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, um, for me, uh, because this, you guys went through some some pretty horrific trauma mentally, and uh, and for me, the long term effects, you know, is something that I still deal with, and uh... <sighs> I'm oh, sorry, right, man. But you know, it's it's kind of difficult when you're the person that caused the problem. Because you know, you never wanna you always you never wanna be that person that caused all of this stuff to happen. And I told myself I wasn't going to do this. Well, <laughs> when I started, I, I, I tried to coach myself up mm -hmm. all day for this to say, hey, I was going to be all right. But, <clears throat> you know, uh, 
you guys are too too young to remember, but back in the day growing up, it used to be this show called Happy Days. And they had this character on his name was Fonzie. And Fonzie <laughs> and huh? We know Fonzie. Yeah, we know Fonzie. <laughs> so Fonzie was always the cool cat. But the one thing Fonzie could never do was apologize. And, you know, every time they try to get him to apologize, you know, he it was just so hard for him to do it. And, you know, uh, in the situation with us, you know, I I took 100 percent responsibility and accountability for, you know, for my actions. And, you know, <clears throat> so your mother, my therapist, a uh, couple of ministers uh, have had to talk to me about, you know, stop blaming yourself, you know, stop beating yourself over the head about it because it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you hear kind of the things that you guys are talking about on how it has affected you guys, you know, with your school, uh, your schoolwork. And, you know, I know more so on Jake's side because, <clears throat> because Shantia, you only had one year left. Uh, I know the struggles that Jake went through with school, uh, because like Jake said, Jake, Jake went to elementary school out here. He went to middle school as well as high school. And I remember vividly when I spoke with his counselor at Paramount and that counselor told me flat out, like we tried to get Jake at Downey High School, we tried to get Jake at Warren, and they was like, his transcripts, like, absolutely not. And the school that I did not want him to have to go to was actually the school that I was zoned, zoned for. And that lady told me, she said, there's no way that he will graduate on time. She said he would have to do X, Y, Z to be able to graduate on time. And I remember, uh, you know, telling Matilda at the time, I was like, this is my fault. I said, this is, this is my fault. And I do remember her saying, you know, hey, he gonna graduate. And uh, I just could not, I couldn't understand how that was going to happen. And, uh, you know, but, you know, thankfully she pushed the heck out of you to to get that to get it and, done and let me stop you right there too shout yeah. out to paramount unified school district because <laughs> they did something that i tell everyone which was a glitch in the system which was a mistake so when i transferred to that school i had eight f's on my transcript okay for whatever reason a 65 at paramount high school mm. paramount unified school district is considered a c Mm. Four F's that were 65s through 69s became C's on my transcript. Look at the Lord. And that, yeah, look at God. And that was the reason, <laughs> <laughs> along with Matilda, but Paramount High School had a glitch <laughs> in their system. Oh my God. And every class, or half the classes that I failed at Wheeler, all of a sudden, your um, grade, hey, grade yeah. went to a C. Yep. And I kept my mouth shut when I got my new transcript. I remember walking, I remember vividly, I was walking to, I think, Algebra 1. And I'm looking, I'm like, wait, hold on. Hold on. So I said, oh, I'm good. I said, I'm good. I said, all I got to do is make sure I don't fail nothing else. And I am solid. <laughs> Man, are you crazy? It, listen, you know, and your senior year is, is the year when, I got sick when them folks was like, hey, you ain't going to make it. And uh, I just kept saying, I said, hey, listen, you know, I, I had to give God one of them prayers, Jake, that said, Lord, if you can't do nothing else but to let me see my son walk across the stage, I said, just just get me to that point to where he can walk across the stage. I didn't know y'all was going to have to walk around the whole track. But, yeah, you know, was it was even more gratifying just seeing you walk. I was like, well, thank you, Lord. And, you know, I get to just enjoy this moment of him walking to graduate. 
so yeah, that that was a that was a cool little moment. But yeah, you know, uh, uh, divorce is hard on the kids, and and uh, especially you know with the with the parents. So so at to what ex to what extent did co parent did co parenting kind of help alleviate alleviate some of the challenges that you guys were going through with the divorce, or or did it at all? I would say not so much for me. I'd probably defer Jake with that question. Okay. Um, don't get upset. But uh, I don't think co-parenting is the correct word. Um, mostly because I was always back and forth. When you think of co-parenting, you think of parents that are like in the same state. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, you got me on weekends. Mama got me on weekends. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. for me, I didn't view it as or I've never viewed it as co-parenting, to be completely honest with you. Um, it was just, oh, when I got tired of living someplace, like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to say no <laughs> if I'm going to yeah. come back and live. So it's just like, it was one of those, like, oh, I'm going to go live with dad. Oh, I'm going to live with mom. Oh, I'm going to live with dad. Oh, I'm going to live with mom. It was one of those situations, because, like, I knew early on, like, you wasn't going to say no. And then I knew early on, heck, mama not going to say no either. So I kind of had, like, I don't want to say the best of both worlds, but I kind of knew I kind of had both options. Like, oh, one year I can live with dad if I want to. The next year I can live with mom if I want to. But I wouldn't call it co-parenting gotcha. in that that's, aspect. That's a good answer. So um, how, did, how, did, how did divorce influence you guys on your views of marriage? So Shantia, you're married now. How many years you been married? Now? Twenty-two. Twenty-two Ooh. years, and that's God have mercy. Amen. So, Shanti, you've been married for twenty-two years. So, prior to getting married, what was that? What was your view on marriage? Uh, you know, with that. Oh, uh, I wasn't getting married. I was about twenty-six to thirty in my head. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't want to initially. I was like, I'm just going to live alone and I'm going to have a little dog and a Honda Civic and an apartment and sit on my balcony and eat hagen dolls randomly. But no, I wasn't I wasn't getting married <laughs> um, for a while. Right. But that that changed. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, and Jake, uh, I know what you used to tell me. Hey, I ain't never getting married, you know. Yeah, um, man. <laughs> uh, no, you know. And, uh, you know, that answer has changed now. Um, yes. It, yes, it has. Thank, yeah. thank goodness it, it has changed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but, so now we just trying to get you to the finish line so you can just go ahead and finish the deal. But go ahead and talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, finishing the patience to, is a virtue on that end. But um, to, nah, for me, like you said, uh, I was like, yeah. I'm not getting married. That's also because, like, I didn't have any good examples. And, you know, you have to think about it, um, Tia, like, all of our aunts and uncles on mom's side, like, they were divorced, single parents. So there was, like, no good example around me. I mean, besides Auntie Frida, Uncle Mark, but I wasn't constantly around that. And so for me, like, yeah, I like the home alone, like Kevin said, when I grow <laughs> up and get married, I'm living alone. Like, <laughs> like I was gonna get be married, but I'm living alone. That was literally my mindset all the way up until you know recent. But uh yeah, I had no intentions on ever like saying I do to anyone um at the time. Um so yeah, like for me, marriage was just a binding contract, it was just paperwork. You know, I used to I used to kind of tell Jake, I said, Hey man, he used to say this to me. I said it's going to be one somebody that will come into your life and will change all of that. I said, everything that you're saying, you know, I hear what you're saying. I said, but it'll be someone that's going to knock you off your feet and it will change everything. And, uh, and so, uh, how's that been for you? It's been amazing. Yeah. I yeah. have no complaints. That's cool. That's cool. It's all about being happy. And, you know, uh, I think any parent 
uh, when they see that the kids are thriving and doing well, you know, they stick their chest out a little bit and, and be kind of happy about it. And, uh, you know, so I like that. So, so here's a, here's kind of a tough question. And, uh, you know, like I said, you guys have been doing a great job, uh, you know, in this hot, with me being in this hot seat the way I am, but do you harbor any resentment towards, um, you know, either your mom or myself, uh, because of the divorce that may still be lingering on to this day? Um, I wouldn't say to this day, no. Um, I think initially as I worked through the emotions throughout the years, especially in my early twenties, um, I was mad at both of you guys. Um, I felt like deceived, like, you know, it's supposed to be one way and you guys got divorced. What, what is that about? So I was mad when I found out, um, you know, the reason, um, I was mad at mom, like, you know, why, why did you stay so long? Hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I was mad at you because I was like, well, why would you break us up like this? You know, so it, I think that it was different things that I felt earlier on, whereas now, you know, through, you know, counseling or just having side conversations with both of you guys individually, I don't have any resentment. Mm -mm. Jake? Nah, um, at first, um, mine was in phases because, you know, like I was initially upset with mom, like I said before, and then Tia kind of yoked me up in that grocery store and was like, no, 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 that's what we're not going to do. <laughs> kinda, you grabbed me, you grabbed my shirt, kind of yoked me up a little bit. But, and then, you know, finding out at 15, 16 with you, but like now it's like, nah, I mean, you know, I, I view things from a different microcosm than everyone else. Um, you know, adults, you know, adults make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And um, only there's only one perfect person on this world. And um, he died for our sins and everything else like that. So I don't hold no resentment towards you or mom for it. I mean, you guys were adults trying to figure, navigate life out. Um, could things have gone differently? Yes. Now I will say if your parents were still here, I don't think we would be having this conversation, Dad. Um that's, yeah, that's um yeah. I honestly feel like we wouldn't be having this conversation. And I probably would have excelled and been a doctor like I wanted to be. <laughs> but, but um, but yeah, not not, but you know, that just wasn't the path. And, you know, I can't be upset or have resentment for the mm -hmm. path that, you know, that was or the cards that was dealt in both you guys' hands. And, you know, hey, you know, it, it happened. OK, forgive, you know, learn from it. The most important thing is to learn from it, because if you don't learn from it, you're going to keep going through the same test. Yep. <laughs> and so my only hope is that you learn from it. And, you know, like how Tia tells me, like when I take these jobs, hey, you're going to continue to go through the same test until you pass it. And, you know, God going to continue to put you through X, Y, and Z until you pass it. So my only hope is that you learn from it and you know what to do, which I think you have. And you haven't really shown that since. So, like, I don't have any resentment for you. Well, you know, I, I really appreciate the fact that you guys um, agreed to do this podcast uh, with me about this and uh, uh, definitely some things that you know I've learned that I didn't that I didn't know uh, but um, in closing uh, Shantia would you like to say something that uh, you want to share with me that it may have been uncomfortable for you to say before that you you want to say and jake you can kind of think about that as well because i'll come back to you for that answer as well uncomfortable um mm, i think that maybe when you ask the question about deferring well i defer to jake because of the co-parenting thing i feel like ultimately because of the transition time that you guys were in, I didn't really get to see you or talk to you as much. 
Um, I think that for me, when I did get married, it was kind of like a disappointment because I didn't get to have you there or feel like I had the support um, because you were going through, I guess, things on your own. So I, I kind of feel like in that aspect, that. Yeah. Um, and I think you and I had kind of gone back and forth before I got married about me moving back out to LA. Mm -hmm. um, but it was kind of like, I, I was kind of afraid, you know, distrust yeah. or what have you. So yeah. That was one of the main reasons. I didn't. But yeah. Yeah. I think ultimately, you know, um, we're in a, a way different spot now, obviously, um, you know, when I, when it comes to our relationship. So I feel like, you know, we're finally on a, a, a really good path to the point where we can communicate openly. Um, whereas before I didn't I didn't necessarily feel like that was the case. Yeah. Jake. Um, not necessarily, um, my question to you and you can just, you know, when question to you and mom, you guys can answer this on your own time. It doesn't have to be here or to me and Tia, but, um, have you truly forgiven yourself? And if you haven't, I think you should start the healing stage of that because, um, I talk to you like you and mom all the time, you you know, and I have to ask myself, have they truly forgiven themselves for the situation? And, you know, dad, have you truly forgiven yourself? I've already forgiven you for what has happened and everything else like that. Um, but I think the next stage in both my parents, I, our parents, T, I think me and you both can agree, is the forgiving each other or your self stage. Um, Cause there's just sometimes where it's just like, hmm, it's kind of like, hmm, you know, not gonna spill any beans of me, what me and Tia talk about, but it's kind of like, hmm, you know? So it's just like, you know, that like, if you haven't, I implore you to do so, um, you know, and get get started in, you know, your healing journey. You know, we, we always talk of, you know, in the black community, we always say, oh, you know, I don't need to talk to no one. Y'all need no therapist. You know, ain't nothing wrong with you. No, there is something wrong with you. You need to go <laughs> sit on somebody's couch and go talk to someone. Not saying there's something wrong with you, but that needs to like end in the black community. Um, I had to do it uh, for about like a good year, talk to someone, you know, and it is healthy. Uh, granted, we are having these conversations on this platform. But to everyone listening, like if you are going through it, like you definitely should go seek, you know, guidance and get on your healing journey so you can feel better about yourself and not beat yourself up over spilled milk, spoiled milk. That's that's real. That's real. And uh, to answer your question, there there's still some some healing that needs to be done. Uh, <clears throat> you know, because you you kind of feel like you know, you screw things up and, you know, like I said earlier, every parent wants their kids to thrive. And when you know that you have had an impact on that and uh, when you, when you've caused, when you were the problem, you know, you, you feel there's a, for me, I can't speak for nobody else, but me, you know, there was a, there was a strong guilt that was put, that was put on me and I, I felt it, uh, um, you know, I told you guys about, well, I don't know if I told you guys or not, but I know that there are places that people still hold it against me. And I think you guys know what I'm talking about. And that's why I don't go to that place. Hey, 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 all right, come on, we're doing real good. Oh, sorry. Oh, you, you so all good. I'm gonna say is they need to change the last Jake, name to incorporate it. Jake, you was doing so good, man. You was doing so good. So and I'm good. not the part, but you was doing so good. <laughs> Anyone yeah. knows that's why I don't go anymore. Hey, and, and you know, there's a lot of people like, I wonder what they're talking about. Don't even worry about it. Don't worry about but it. But anyway, you know, um 
you can you can sometimes you can always tell when someone shakes your hand or embrace you, you know, and you can feel you can feel it, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, we we're almost at the 30 year mark almost, you yeah. know, with the, you know, I'm still kind of getting nailed to the cross, you know, because mm -hmm. because of that. And uh, you know, it uh your mom, to her credit, you know, there's been a lot of times where she literally had to say, hey, please, please go ahead. If I've forgiven you. Well, first she would put it like this. She said, if God forgave you first, I forgave you. She said, I believe that the kids have forgiven you. She said, now it's time for you to go ahead and forgive yourself and try to get better from this. And I never could just really grasp onto that because of how everything in this totality, you know, has happened. But uh, the two of you guys have really made me better as a person. And I could not have asked for any better kids, you know, such as you guys. Uh, you guys are inspiration to me and I really do appreciate it. Uh, I think that both of you guys know how much I care about you and how much I love you. And uh, there is a, a bucket. I have something on my bucket list that I really want so bad. And you guys kind of know what it is. I just need to have that, that, you know, and uh, I hope that the good Lord will allow that to take place, you know, sooner than later. Uh, but I really, really appreciate you guys doing this uh, for me today. And you no, know, we can have it now. You can just add her to the thing. I'm just let me stop. Let me stop. Oh. <laughs> there you go again. You know, <laughs> it's it's just I, I just can't. You know, you, can't help you just can't help yourself, <laughs> man. You, you know, we just do this whole thing and try to be authentic and everything, and you just can't. Help I was yourself. authentic. Authenticity. So I'll tell you. I'll tell you, tell you what. I'll tell you what we do. When we finish this, we'll okay. stay online. I will not. I don't have time for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I anyway. gotta get dinner ready and stuff, man. Like you eating left. We already talked about that. You eat leftovers. All that. I is still gotta warm it up because I'm about to make my little twist to it, man. I'm just not about to just heat up just leftovers. And all just right, everybody. Just that, okay. Man. Everybody don't need to hear about all this stuff. What's going on right now? Hey, kids, I love you guys. I love you guys to pieces. You know, thank you so much. And um, as I say, all my shows, keep God first place in your life. He'll take you places that you never dreamed of. Shantia, Jake, I salute you guys. I salute you guys for the two adults that you ha guys have become. Shantia, you're such a beautiful woman inside and outside. And I applaud you for your 22 years of marriage. Jake, you are a wonderful soul. You got, unfortunately, unfortunately, you have so much of me now in you, but there are some things that I hope that you will never ever do, <laughs> you know, because I, I love that future that you got over there. And uh, I'm looking forward to one day, you know, bigger and better things uh, for, for you. But I thank you for the son that you are to me. I really appreciate it. I, I love the fact that I have good relationships with you guys where we can laugh and talk and joke, make fun of each other. I really love that. And, uh, you know, Shantia, I'm hoping that uh, in some kind of way, selfishly, that uh, the good Lord will bring you guys back to the West Coast. But anyway, you guys take care of yourself. And, I love uh, you, Dad. We and, love uh, you. Yeah. You guys be, care be careful, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. All right. Okay. Pick a side, Nation. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Pick a Side podcast. I've done a lot of uh, interviews and had a lot of guests on my podcast. Needless to say, uh, that one was a little special for me personally. Uh, 
and there was a lot that was uncomfortable for me to hear, very painful for me to hear, but I'm very grateful uh, to my kids, Shanti and Jake, that they were able to come and speak their truth. I can think of young At the end of the day, we want full transparency. And I know that sometimes that makes people uncomfortable and they don't want to hear that. But I'm just so very grateful that I was able to get through that. And more, more importantly than anything, I have a tremendous relationship with my children. And uh, I'm just so very glad that uh, they were able to look past my faults and forgive me and give me another opportunity to love on them and to treat them the way uh, that I'm supposed to. So big shout out to my kids and just so very grateful uh, to that. I want to encourage those that are going through uh, these issues, get some help. Get professional therapy, talk to your pastor, talk to someone that can give you some really good advice on how to handle it. Don't don't try to do it by yourself and uh, you know but always love your kids don't let the divorce take away and stop you from doing what you're supposed to do and having your responsibilities so thank you so very much please also remember to please hit the like subscribe and uh, and, uh the notification button uh, definitely would be able to help our show keep going forward. So thank you so very much. Take care. And always remember, keep God first place in your life. He'll take you places you never dreamed of. Have a good one. Somebody help me. My brother.